to welcome all of you for joining us tonight. I'm excited about to talk the topic. And I want to welcome you to this week's Confident Women Workshop for an opportunity not only to hear who we are in Christ, but to thrive in a place of wholeness from the inside on to the outside. Heavenly Father, I pray your blessings upon the word that we'll get into this evening. I thank you that we have a heart that's open to hear, to embrace the very plan and the purpose that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So for those that are following us, my husband had this ankle replacement surgery <laughs> and they had opened up his uh, right ankle and took out all this uh, defectiveness mm -hmm. that was in there and mm -hmm. put in, uh, it's a replacement, so put in this ankle that they created. And so in uh, replacing it and bringing this place of wholeness, mm -hmm. he's in this recovery season now. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed, truly amazed, how even the first night he was able to move his toes and to do things now, two weeks later, that he has not been able to do for uh, really years. The topic tonight, I'm into my husband's ankle replacement surgery and it's, it's entitled, Learning to Live, what? Inside out. Learning to live inside out. So here's my husband, but there's such confidence now because he knows he's coming, he's walking from a place of wholeness. Well, when we make Jesus the Lord of our life, isn't that awesome? I was sharing this with my grandkids this weekend. Mm -hmm. Jesus took out all that stuff that was defective and bad and, and uh, unhealthy and wounded. He took all that, uh, that stuff out and then he brought us to a place of wholeness and completeness in him. He has deposited his very life and the fullness of all that that brings on the inside of us. Now, what's amazing to me is that uh, from his word, Galatians 2.20, it says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I want to ask him. Okay, so this we're... Way. This way? Yes. There we go. Yeah, just am, I, oh, am I okay now? Yeah, just a tad. Just a little bit more? Yes, there you go. Okay, there we go. Yes. Hey, nothing like being aligned from the inside to the outside. So Galatians 2.20 uh, talks about how that we've been crucified with Christ, but we no longer, it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So when we make Jesus the Lord of our life, the fullness of who he is, is placed inside of us. He took out all that sin. He removed it and replaced the very life of God in us. But you know to walk in that fullness of life? Now that is a process of learning to live from the inside on on out to the outside, right? Yeah. My daughter was telling me she had met a number of classmates. They all went to a Christian university together, and uh, many of them uh, were participated in the same seminary to go into the ministry. But what's sad? Are they serving in the ministry today, no. ten no. years later? No. No. In fact, many of them, she was telling me, were no longer involved in a church anymore. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to pray. That is why we have to pray. And you know, my heart was so burdened, and that's what launched what I'm talking to you tonight about. When we make Jesus the Lord of our life, He has deposited the very fullness of life inside us. But you know what? It's a process to learn and to understand all that's in there and to release it into our life. And we release it by faith because the just shall live by faith, yeah, right. right? But we perish for a lack of knowledge. And either virtually or in this place, it's important to be with one another to stir and awaken the very fullness of life that's ours in Christ and to understand what that life is. You know, Jesus himself says that he came that we could have life enjoy life and have it more abundantly it's we are capable of living in this life just like my husband as i mentioned at the beginning he's capable of walking now now it's a process he has the physical therapist coming to the house to help him 
learn how, because for the first time in a long time, he's learning how to walk correctly, right? Because he had done it so long, so incorrectly. In fact, the surgeon had said that he had worn out a portion of his uh, heel because he wasn't walking properly. He had worn out that bone on that, on that foot. Mm-hmm. You know what's wonderful for us? We may have been wounded and broken and done things <coughs> ineffective. But when we came to that fullness of new life in Christ, he brought back a wholeness and a completeness. And we just need to learn how to walk in that newness of life and freedom once again. But it's a process. It's, it's getting in his word and having our mind renewed to understand the very life and fullness of hope that he has imparted in us. But it's a process of, of just walking it out and experiencing the very fullness of what it entails. Just like my husband, he has someone helping him to learn how to walk again, to walk correctly, to be able to stand up and not lean as he had for so many years. You don't even realize that you have developed these habits that are ineffective, that are not uh, in a line with this new ankle that he had of our life. Sometimes, even though the very life has been awakened inside our spirit, but our soul and our flesh is still used to that old broken way of living and thinking. And it needs to, that's why we need each other. We need the word, we need prayer, just like we heard, we need to pray to be able to get a line once again to embrace the very fullness of life that's all we do. My gosh, it's a it's not that you have to manipulate yourself to walk. Mm-mm. You've already been aligned to walk in that fullness of life. Amen. You just need to learn how to go with that flow. Yes. Right? Amen. And it's awesome when we do. Mm. There's a freedom when we do. I look at my husband when I see him starting to with the physical therapist, learning how to walk for the first time, yes. free from pain, free from oh. hurt. No pain meds needed. Really? We can be in that same place of wholeness in Christ. He said he bore our pain, right? He carried it on the cross. He carried our weaknesses. And by his stripes, we have been made whole. We are whole and complete in him. But you know what? There are people not walking in that wholeness. They have maybe not positioned themselves in a place because of lack of knowledge and maybe they haven't had individuals that have challenged and stirred and awakened the very life, just like we heard in our intro tonight, you know, uh, to embrace the purpose and the fullness of what he has for us. Now, there are a great many promises in God's word. And Paul, who wrote the majority of the New Testament, he was uh, sharing many of these promises with us. And let's go over what some of those are. It's a partial list of what the Word of God says that's ours in Christ Jesus. But we are complete in Him because He is the head of all principality and power. We are alive in Christ. We are free from the law of sin and death. We are far from oppression. And we do not fear, for terror does not come near us. We are born of God, and the evil one touches us not. I love that. We are holy and without blame. We have the mind of Christ. We have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. The greater one is living in us than he that is in the world. We have received the gift of righteousness. You know what? We reign, right? We reign as kings in life by Christ Jesus. Now, there's so many more promises, but you won't know what those promises are if you're not in the Word and studying it. That's why man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when we're in that Word, and when we're studying that Word for ourselves with the help of the Holy Spirit that He's given us, we can receive the fullness of what truth He has for us. And it's the truth that sets us free. Amen. Now in this freedom that we have, it renews our mind just like my husband. He's learning how to walk again. Wow. Walk correctly. Uh Uh-oh. When we come to Christ, we are a new creature in Him. Behold, all things are made new. To learn how to walk 
in that life that he has. we got to learn that what that means. Amen. That very life that's ours, mm. which is why it's important to be in that word. And, you know, one thing that came to my mind as I was thinking about what my daughter had young people, and they're still very young, they're in their 30s, uh, they're not quite 40, but still young in life, they still have a whole lot of living it to the fullness Amen. because they're not embracing what that life has for them right now. They may have been hurt, in fact, the majority of them have, and uh, we know that, that we shouldn't allow the hurt and the disappointments of life to uh, validate the very plan and purpose that he has for our future. Amen. He defines our future, and he says trials and tribulations are going to come, but hey, we can be of good cheer, yes. right? Yes. Because yes. in the course of life, and life happens, right. we can develop in uh, maturity. Our patience definitely uh, has a big role in that, but it's not how we start something. It's how we finish it. You know, I was explaining to uh, my grandkids because that just stirred a whole lot in me as I was preparing for tonight's uh, topic, learning to live inside out. And I was just challenging them, and they may be, you know, I had the oldest eight, and I had I had all five for a couple hours yesterday, and uh -oh. I thought I, I'm just gonna stir <laughs> it. You know, we yeah. did our princess fun, yeah. we did a little superhero fun, yeah. but you know what, if we're not in the word fun, uh -oh. then we haven't hit the depth uh -oh. of what life is all about. And we're here on this earth for just a short season compared to the eternity True. that he has for us. And I told those little ones, now they may have, the youngest is three, and it, you know, it just moves on up the the ramp there, but I, I did Q&A, we did conversation, we did prayer, we got in the word because I explained to those children, hey, as for me and my house, hey, we're going to serve the Lord Amen. in this place. That's right. And so when I, my daughter says, you don't have to tuck them in. Mm. And I, I've already said good night. I said, but their Gigi has not tucked them in. That's right. And when they got it, when I went in that room, of course, I told them I'm getting ready to go to bed, too, because they, they'd worn me out. But uh, I wanted to declare the very fullness of life that God has for them. I wanted to speak and make those declarations over them. But you all, to live from the inside out, we got to make those declarations of who we are in Him. Not how we feel, not how the circumstances are defining what life is like, yeah. but what God declares life that is like. And it is by faith, because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of not seen, mm -hmm. of things not seen. But we are to speak to that mountain by faith. And so I uh, am reminded uh, how important it is, uh, as it says in Hebrews 6, 12, that uh, many people will say, well, I will believe it when I see it, right? How many times have you heard people say that? All the time. All the time. But mm -hmm. God's promises must be believed first. Hebrews 6, 12 says, In order that you may not grow disinterested or become spiritual sluggards, but imitators behaving as those who through faith, by their entire leaning and personality on God and absolute trust and by practice of patient endurance are now waiting uh, as they inherit the promises that God has. So faith and patience, they're keys to unlocking the vault of God's mm -hmm. promises. You, you walk it out by faith, but there's a patience on that timetable for manifestation, mm -hmm. but you stay the course and you, uh, you keep pressing on and forward. Uh, Pat and I, it's always an adventure seeing our children. We love them so much. And if you're watching, we're just so proud of you. I text each of you today to let you know how <laughs> proud of you I am. But as a parent, guess what? We were praying a whole lot too. Mm -hmm. Because just the burdens of, of you know realizing it's important. We want them to embrace the full scope of what God has. But you know, we can... Uh, be available but unless they ask for that guidance and counsel we're gonna be steadfast to pray right. so we did pray and it brought joy to my heart when I uh, 
saw my son-in-law ask, well, actually, he asked me first. He says, where's dad? I said, well, he's downstairs. He's got his leg elevated. He says, I'm, I'm going to have a conversation with dad. And I saw him go down there. And they, he was down there for a good hour or so. Oh. They were having a conversation about, as my husband says, life. Uh -oh. Right? Mm. But, you know, I don't believe that that environment would not have come to pass had we not prayed and trusted for God to just open up those doors. Well, God says, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. He's wanting to reveal to us the very life that he has, or maybe the decisions that we need to make in life to, to achieve and, and to reach the, the destiny and purpose that he has for us. But we got to draw near to him. We've got to ask and seek the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Or maybe it might mean a trusted friend. That's why we have, uh, for those that are watching, we have, uh, in this case, this evening, it's, it's Mishari. We have others uh, like Anne and Tammy have helped, who have helped facilitated the conversation and dialogue for you watching. Mm. For you in this room, we have real talk afterwards. Okay. Because we know it's important to have a chance to just talk about it. Right? To, to get have it broken down and have you share what you feel God's laying on your heart to share with one another. Why? Because together, and it's important that we are uh, not forsaking the assembly of believers, but mm. together we can, as the part, the body of Christ, use the giftings to help encourage and edify one another mm. so that we can all walk in that fullness of the life that he has for us. So when we receive Jesus, not only does he come to live in us, but uh, we also have to release. I mean, it says if we abide in him and we allow his words to abide in us, there's a, there's a release of allowing him to, to, to have leadership, mm. to have that ability to counsel and direct us in uh, the life that he has for us. You know, think of uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, For our sake he made Christ virtually to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him and through him we might become, and it says endued with, viewed as being as the examples of the righteousness of God, that we ought to be approved and acceptable and in right standing with him. So he's in us, and he lives in us, we are in union with him, but you know what? We have to abide in him. Just because he's there doesn't mean we're tapped into it, That's right? right. Yeah. You know, just like mm -hmm. we, you know, my son-in-law, which I love, we're with them all. The, you know, they came in Thursday night before they left to go to this reunion and then came back. We were there. We were available. But it wasn't until he asked, where's dad, and came down and had that conversation, right? God's always there. He's never far away, but he's just wanting us to ask him and have conversation with him, mm -hmm. to, to just talk about life. And I love that he's right there. We don't have to search for him. He's just right there. When we call, he answers. So let's talk about point number one, the deposit. So he's deposited all that is needed to live the fullness of life that he has. Let's... Uh, like use the example, let's say somebody, you know, let's say several million dollars were deposited inside our bank account, right? Just as an example, like Which the very thing? fullness of life. Page three, if you're following the notes. Oh, you're trying to figure. So, you know, <laughs> so you. let's say we have several million dollars that have been deposited in our bank account, enough to live the rest of this life. But unless you draw from those deposits, you're not going to be able to reap the ben benefits of it. And there are some people that don't even know, for example, that the deposit was made. Oh my. Right? It says we perish for a lack of knowledge. Okay. Some people do not even know all the fullness of life that has been just bestowed upon us because Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, he's right there. Mm. And all that has that very life that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is living inside us. Mm -hmm. And he's given us the helper, the Holy Spirit, to live out that life. Mm -hmm. But if we don't if we don't study, or if we don't ask God for the, the understanding of the word, we won't have that. But if we get into it, like you use an example of depositing 
you have to put something in in order to go and withdraw something. That's right. So, so you for need for in, when when it's like when Peter was on the boat and Jesus was telling him to come to me, but what happened? Peter took his eyes off and he began to sink. He was really teaching him about you know when whatever comes into his life. I'm just making it like a paraphrasing. When when he was when when he was in trouble when they were in trouble in that water, the, it, it's given an example about the storm. Storms come in our lives, but we need an anchor. We need to know that that the Lord is there, mm -hmm. and not to doubt. And what Peter was telling him when, when Jesus said to come to me, Peter Peter actually doubted. And then he, afterward, when he realized it, he said, Lord, when he was getting ready to sink, he said, Lord, save me. And right there, Jesus, you know, right, right there, yeah. he took him in. So you so have let to me, study let me share with Because not everyone can hear, but it's live. Let mm -hmm. me just share that. So we had this great uh, story of how Peter, he got out of the boat. Mm -hmm. And as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. But just as it was shared just a moment ago, he sank when his, he was distracted looking at the surroundings. And as he was about to drown, he called out on Jesus. Amen. And Jesus rescued him. Amen. He was Amen. right there. That's right. And for all of us, it, and just as we heard a moment ago too, it's important that we're in the Word. Amen. We got to be in the Word. We got to study mm -hmm. and be in the Word. The That's Word, right? right? It is... It, it, it's it's food to our spirit. You know, I find often that uh, the deposit, what are we doing there? The fullness of life is there, but you've got to stir it. It kind of reminds me all those years we, when my husband went to school in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, they have, if you look around, you see these oil pumps, right? They're pumping out that oil. The oil is there, but it had to be pulled out. I'm telling you, when we're in the Word, as we allow the Holy Spirit to show us, when we're in moments like this to just have a conversation and then study it on our own, it's like pulling out all that richness of wealth that is ours that's been deposited Amen. in us already. Yes. And to help us with that, we don't need some pump like I saw in Oklahoma that would pump out that oil. We got the Holy Spirit of living water Amen. that's going to teach yes. that word and yes. reveal it for our time and season. Amen. But the key is we've got to be active pursuers Amen. of the very fullness of life Amen. and the, the very, uh, just the wealth of the plan that he has for us, not comparing ourselves with other people, right? 1 Corinthians 3.21 says, Let no one exult proudly concerning men boasting of having this or that man as a leader for things are yours in other words we're not to find our worth or value from other people it's got to be from jesus himself mm -hmm. and you know what we need to celebrate the uniqueness of who we are we're getting ready in 2020 to celebrate 10 years of the ministry Amen. and i told the directors i i just want to celebrate and do a tribute of the people who have just done uh, just wonderful works of, of just letting the light and the life of Christ mm -hmm. celebrate. Because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Amen. Jesus is the head. We're Amen. the body. Yes. Right. And so if we're so busy trying to be somebody we're not or trying to compare ourselves or saying, hey, why can't I be like that person? I just want to be different. Well, let me tell you, I got good news for you. When you made Jesus the Lord of your life, you were made different mm -hmm. and made new. Mm -hmm. But you're you're different, right. right? You are unique, original, but made whole different. And the uniqueness of that wholeness that's yours in Christ, he wants you not to just say, hey, I wish, but to get on with who you are in him. Amen. And, um, you know, I mean, life happens. I had a coworker. Today he came in my office and said, "Hey, Cindy, where's the, you know, the answer to such and such?" I'm like, uh, "What such and such? I couldn't remember. I have so many things hopping." Mm -hmm. And she said, "You know that paper I stuck in your inbox? I'm looking through my inbox. Uh, -oh. uh, no, I don't. What was it about? Help refresh my memory." So she refreshed my memory. I'm like, "Oh, that one. Well, I told General Dunn about it, 
And she said, you know what, don't worry about it. It's, it's not gonna be something you have to do. Well, she said, why didn't you come back to tell me? I didn't know. I mean, if I knew I was supposed to get back, but I apologized, I told her I was sorry, please forgive me, well, I'll see. You know, I mean, that beat up on me. You know, I'm thinking, well, do I need to go and to her and apologize again? I mean, I mean, maybe my apology wasn't sincere enough for her or whatever. And God said, Cindy, keep it moving. Right? 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 You apologize. You, can't, you, can't you overlooked. Yes, right. Definitely a communication. If she had said on there, let me know, and I, I'll move forward on this project. But when the general, who is her boss, her boss, said, hey, don't worry about it. Then you don't. I'm thinking... It's done. <laughs> she works for the boss. Amen. The boss is the one that does the letter. That's I mean, right. I thought it was done. But you know what? If you beat yourself up, mm. you're not going to be able to live the life. Uh -oh. You're not able to live in fullness because you're always thinking about, I should have, could have. But you know what? There's a whole lot of should have, could have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, just, you, want, you just pick yourself up and you just keep on moving forward. Mm -hmm. Life is just that way. You know, last week it was kind of unique because uh, for those that might not have heard this story, I got a text from my boss asking if I was coming in and uh, I just rattled off all this stuff I needed to have done uh, and was working on and I've been working since early this morning and she said, you know, it has nothing to do about that, your work ethic, I know you're a hard worker. But it was because they were planning this surprise birthday party for me. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes, you know, we when someone asks us something, our defense flag comes up, right? Yeah, that's true. If we know that we are crowned with God's favor, then we're not flowing defensively. We're just saying, oh, I'll be in as soon as I can. Thanks for checking in on me. A more positive perspective. Yeah, you do. You know, I'm working on that. You know what I mean? But it's, uh, and that leads me to point number two, close fellowship with Jesus. If you know who you are in him and you're confident in that love that he has, that, that fellowship that you share, guess what? You're not coming at a defensive response. You're coming from a, a place that's fully deposited with this love. You love others because he first loved you. Oh, yes. You are crowned in his favor, so you flow in that favor. And my last point as I wrap up, bearing good fruit. I mentioned this earlier about uh, the scripture in John 14, 27. Uh, it reminds us about this peace, but John 15, 5 talks about how he's the vine and we are the branches. And from, as we abide in him, we can flow in the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, right? We can flow in the peace that only he can give, not as the world gives. But it is important, not only that we draw near to him, but that we abide in yeah. him, that we're in fellowship with him. And when we do, we will, not maybe, we will bear good fruit. Well, that was a quick turn, wasn't it? But you know what? I just love being able to be with all of you each week, and I want to thank you for joining us. Now, next week we're not meeting because it's the Labor Day holiday, so we hope to see you in two weeks. Until then, look for my blog and some updates. we got a great mini-series that will be kicking off, and we're excited to have you join us each and every week that we meet, and we'll look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Have a great Labor Day. Bye, everyone. Amen. That's awesome.